Knowing your attack and magic items is very important, but understanding how to use each defensive item is the real game changer. Not only can every hero make use of them, but you can also directly counter your enemies. Let me quickly show you why this is so important. This match here was a real one-man show for me. Franco helped me a lot in the early game, but the rest of my team was more or less useless. I faced 4 magic damage dealers, so I knew I would run into some problems later. No matter how underfarmed the mage is, they can still deal a high amount of damage to a squishy marksman like me with only 2 core items and the late game. So after I got my 3 crit items, I decided to get Athena shield because I needed magic defense against them. This worked already pretty well, but was still not enough to survive their combo. So I decided to get Radiant Armor as well, and voila, I could easily sustain a full combo of Guinevere. And before you ask, yes, my damage was still high enough to easily kill my enemies. The result of my item decisions you can see here. 58% damage dealt, 33% damage taken, 16.3 rating. Any more questions why you really need to learn how to counter every enemy with your defensive items? Thought so. Now, let's start with the tier 1 and tier 2 items. Knowing these items is vital to reach a higher rank, as you can easily counter any enemy in the early game for a super cheap price. Plus, every good player will use them against you, so you will have a serious disadvantage if you don't know how to use them. And because they are so vital, we start with number one, Vitality Crystal. Godly transition! Yes! This high utility item gives you 230 HP for early sustainability. The great thing about HP is that it works against any damage type, even true damage. This item also has a lot of upgrade paths, which means you can use it to build many high tier defensive items later on. If you play Aroma, it never hurts to buy one right after your roving boots. For example, you can buy this item when using Hilder, as this will increase her passive regeneration, which scales with her max HP. So it's a perfect item when you try to invade the enemy's jungle. You didn't thought that this item can be useful on its own, right? Just wait what other mind-blowing things we will reveal later on. Number 2. Leather Jerkins A decent trinket that gives you 18 physical defense. This is perfect to counter physical damage heroes in the early game. If you are using a marksman and need extra protection against your counterpart or a physical assassin, this item is an effective solution for a super cheap price. And as a tank or fighter, you can get two or even three of them and upgrade them later into a high tier item. Why not getting steel leg plates you ask? Well, we will get there later. Number 3. Magic Resist Cloak same price, same stats, but it gives you magic defense instead. As marksman or even assassin, you can get it if the enemy have a lot of magic damage. Imagine an enemy team of Joy, Farsa, Basha and Nathan. And as a tank, you need to get every magic defense item you can get your dirty hands on anyway when you face a lineup like this. I mean, just imagine getting physical defense item against a magic damage team or a freaking DHS. What the? Number 4. Healing Necklace The cheapest defensive item that grants you 4 HP regen per second. It is perfect for side laners to get into a lot of skirmishes. This item will help you to stay on your lane longer without the need to recall back to the base. For example, if you are using Terisla and want to trade some blows, this necklace will regenerate a lot of your lost HP and help you to win a grueling fight long, long, long fight. F I know 4 HP per second doesn't sound that much, but if you think about that 5 minutes equals 300 seconds, which then equals 1200 HP regen, it already sounds much better. Eh? Number 5. Hero's Ring The most expensive tier 1 defensive item that gives you 150 HP and 5% cooldown reduction. This item doesn't give you any decent attributes considering it's freaking expensive though, but you need it as a component item for many tier 3 items. So it is still better to get it than sitting on your pile of gold while building them. Number 6. Aris Bell 
but this tier 2 item gives you plus 770 HP. You can upgrade your crystal if you struggle against mixed or true damage, especially if you're a roamer with a limited budget in the early game. Still, HP alone is not the solution because no matter how high your HP is, without any damage reduction you will end up taking too many big slaps on your butt. Number 7. Molten Essence Or one of Valir's Bolts It gives you 540 HP and a unique cause of called Burning Soul. Your hero will gain an aura that deals 0.6% of your max HP as magic damage to nearby enemies every second. It also deals extra damage against minions and jungle creeps. And the extra damage scales with your level. This item is the perfect one for tanky heroes who lack the ability to clear jungle creeps and minion waves. Most tank junglers are pretty much dead in this meter, but on the XP lane it is a very good first item to clear minion waves fast. So you can then rotate to help your allies in the first turtle fight. Focus on other items after you've got it though, because Cursed Helmet is not a good first core item. Number 8. Silence Row Despite the name, it doesn't give you the power to silence your enemies. Instead, you will get 540 HP and 30 magic defense without any unique passive. So this tier 2 item gives you better magic defense and more HP for extra sustainability, so you should upgrade that poor man's cloak when the magic damage starts to hurt too much. Then you need to upgrade it to Oracle or Athena Shield later on though, because otherwise this item is just way too expensive. As Marksman, it's often better to get a hybrid item like Rose Gold Meteor anyway. But more to that later. Number 9. Black Ice Shield This item gives you 400 mana and 22 physical defense. Its basic attributes are quite bad considering the item is made for tanks and expensive AF. I mean, most tanks don't even use mana that much and a lot of fighters doesn't even need mana to cast their skills. Additionally, it has the Arctic Cold passive though. That reduces the attack speed of nearby enemies to 85% of normal. This is really useful as you can counter enemies who rely on attack speed at the early game. Whenever you plan to get Dominance Ice Cream, you should get this item first, as it is often more useful for tanks in the early game than Steel Leg plays. Number 10. Dreadnought Armor This armor gives you plus 40 physical defense and a unique passive called Tether. When you get hit by a skill, it reduces the attacker's physical damage by 4% for 2 seconds, which can be stacked up to 3 times. So 3 times 4 is 12, minus none that 12, quick buff. God, I need to work on that. This item is a natural counter for physical damage heroes who are dependent on their skills to deal damage. And a lifesaver especially for marksmen when you face a skill dependent MM and assassin. Most of the time, our squishies don't even stand a chance after receiving a full combo. But dreadnought armor can save your butt from the... Number 11. Steel Leg Plates If you remember my old video about the small items, this one was the best low tier item together with Fury Hammer. So naturally, Moonton increased the price for this ball cover due to inflation. It still gives you 45 physical defense, but it now costs 100 gold more than before. So if we do the math and talk about cost efficiency, you should probably forget about upgrading your leather jerkins. Especially if you're not planning to get blade armor and dominance ice cream. In addition, the possibilities to get flat physical penetration was also increased, so if you are playing a mage or a marksman, you will get a better result by aiming for winter truncheon or wind of nature to avoid physical damage. Number 12. Radiant Armor Now we are getting to the big boy items. It costs 1880 gold and is the cheapest option among the tier 3 magic defense items. You get 950 HP, 52 magic defense and 12 HP regen. It has a unique passive that gives you 5 to 8 magic damage reduction whenever you receive magic damage. This can be stacked up to 6 times and lasts for 3 seconds. This item is very effective against enemies that deal magic damage with multiple hits, such as Chang'e, Kimi, Nathan, Eamon, Guinevere, Sylvana or Harley. At max stacks, this item can reduce magic damage taken by up to 48 points per tick, which is even higher than Basha's passive. 
As I showed to you in the beginning of the video, this item can be bought even by marksmen when you face multiple DPS mages. But you should rather aim for Athena's shield if you face burst mages. Or go for a rose gold meteor as this also increases your physical attack. Number 13. Athena's shield. Do you have a medical condition called Eudorophobia? Or maybe getting chills over whispers from Aurora? Then this is the item for you. This memento from Freya's sister grants you 900 HP, 62 magic defense and 2 HP regen. The passive gives you 25% magic damage reduction for 3 seconds upon taking magic damage. And can be triggered again after leaving combat for 5 seconds. If you're tired of surprises when you try to touch some grass, this is the item for you. Didn't I already say that? Yo, cut the first one out, a video editor. As Athena's shield will save your squishy butt every single time from unauthorized slaps. <coughs> but it is also the most expensive magic defense item you can buy. So using it as your first core item might not be the wisest choice as a tank. As I think you always need to be flexible with your build anyway and take a look at the enemy's lineup. If the enemies have more than one magic damage dealer, go ahead and pick Radiant Armor as your base defense against them. And then combine it later with Athena Shield once they got their core items. Most of the time your build should look like this against a magic damage team. If the enemies only have a single mage on their team though, tough boots is more than enough for the early game. And you can get Athena or Radiant as your second or even third core. Item. Also remember, you can always add a cheap man's cloak in between if the magic damage becomes too high. And since we already talked about magic damage reduction, let's cover the last magic defensive item as well. Number 14. Oracle. The Elven King's Code gives you 850 HP, 42 magic defense and 10% cooldown reduction. Yes, this item has mediocre magic defense and HP stats, but you're mostly getting it for its passive called Bless. All received shield and regen effects are increased by 30%, which means it is a wet dream item for all regen maniacs out there. <laughs> Ooh. Oracle also synergizes very well with Guardian Helmet regen. And if your enemies try to counter your regen with Dominance Ice Cream and other anti regen effects, this item can be your re counter to minimize the effect as much as possible. Just make sure to remember that this item only benefits the wearer. For example, if an Angela gets Oracle, none of her skills is giving out extra shield or heal. Instead, the recipient of Angela's skills should be the one buying Oracle, so they can get more of those juicy heals. Number 15. Twilight Armor. This one is every Aldox and Leslie's nightmare. You get 1200 HP and 20 physical defense, and a passive that helps you to tank those big boy burst damage. When you receive more than 800 damage in a single instance, it will reduce the excess damage beyond that amount by 300 plus 50% of your max HP. This effect can trigger every 5 seconds. This item is already nice to counter regular burst heroes like Sicilian, Eudora or Aldog, but it really shines against heroes like Leslie or Martis, as it is the only defensive item that actually can reduce true damage. I recommend to pair this item with other defensive items that give you more HP, since their damage reduction scales with your max HP. Quick trivia, you can actually troll Martis players with this item. When the enemies are low, Martis can see that X sign beneath his enemies, which means his ultimate will deal true damage and 100%ly kill the target. But then, when Twilight Armor's passive kicks in, the item will cut down the damage and leave a very confused Martis behind. Well, I guess after 3000 worlds, he finally found his worthy foe. Number 16. Brute Force Breastplate. God, that name never rolls off the tongue. This item gives you 600 HP, 30 physical defense and 10% cooldown reduction. The passive lets you gain a stack every time you use a skill or a basic attack, and each stack gives you 2% movement speed and 4 hybrid defense for 4 seconds. This can be stacked up to 5 times. It is the most versatile defensive items for fighters and assassins who need a bit of defense. The base stats are mediocre at best, but since the passive is very easy to trigger, it's no problem getting it to full stacks in a gank to get your hands on those nice bonus stats. 
Some heroes like Cho and Paquito can easily abuse its passive, as they have low skill cooldowns and high mobility while going in and out of a team fight. The unique part of Bruce Full Brute Force Blast Blah Blah is that you can build up some stacks even before the fight starts using your dash skills for example. Number 17 Immortality Now even the last caveman playing ML knows what this item does. It gives you 800 HP and 20 physical defense and when you die you get revived with a shield. Which is by the way also the point where you can throw this shield into the garbage bin. As the item's passive will go on a strike for a bloody 210 seconds afterwards. No matter which role you are playing, this item is essential. Especially in the late game when the death timer lasts longer than 60 seconds. It gives you a second chance to be reincarnated into a different world gaining cheat skills. Wait, wrong story. The auto revival gives you a second chance to fight back and change your fate for better or for worse. Now every good player switches between Immortality and Winter Junction all the time. After Immortality broke and went into cooldown, they sell and replace it with Winter Junction, as this will give them more time to escape the chaotic battlefield. Of course, you can always go completely over the top by combining other items with it as well. If your mechanics are as good as Kyrie's, you can replace Immortality with Winter Junction, sell this item while you are frozen to Rose Gold Meteor for the shield, and then change this into Guardian Helmet to regenerate your lost HP. And because that's not enough, change your boot to Rapid Boots to increase your survival chances while running away. I will make this play soon on my Nico ML channel, so subscribe to it and follow my series where I rank up using only trash heroes. Number 18 Dominance Ice Cream Yummy! This snack gives you 500 mana, 70 physical defense and 5% movement speed. And you will receive the Arty Cold and Life Bane Aura. It reduces the attack speed of nearby enemies to 70% of normal and also reduces the shield and regen effects of nearby enemies by 50%. This is one of the best items in the game right now. The passive triggers automatically, so it's literally a nightmare for heroes that depends on attack speed and regen effects. If you're getting fed up with the support and healer meter, make sure to buy this item first to counter those annoying Dominance ice cream works best with tanks, fighters or any other frontliner that stays close to the enemies. If you're playing a marksman though and need anti-heal, Sea Halberd is your item and Necklace of the Rons is the one for you if you play a mage. Number 19 Antikuras It gives you 920 HP, 54 physical defense and 4 HP regen. Antikuras is the better version of Dreadnought Armor as it has the same passive effect but better. Instead of 4, it reduces the attacker's physical damage by 6% per stack for 2 seconds. This is the ultimate counter against heroes who depend on physical damage skills, as it will reduce their physical damage by up to 18%. And if you think 18% is small, check this out. If Saber's combo deals 3000 damage to you, Antikura's passive can easily cut down the damage to 2460. That is worth one or two basic attacks which makes it much easier to survive an ambush. Plus, there is of course their physical defense and extra HP on top. Always prioritize this item when you are facing a lot of physical skill casters on the enemy side, as this item saves you a lot of time from their certain death combo. This fucker is so weak. Number 20 Guardian Helmet. Despite being commonly used by low skilled Monian troops, this secretly OP item is often ignored by the low skilled players. Yes, if you ignore them, you're not like this OP guy. You are like <gasps> them. Dead. Buried. Useless. Is it really smart insulting my viewership? <laughs> it gives you 1550 HP and 20 HP regen. And it has a recovery passive that heals 2.5% of your max HP per second. If you do the simple math, 2.5% might sound like a small number, but people often forget that it regenerates this amount per second. It actually means you will regen 10% of your HP in 4 seconds and 100% in just 40 seconds. Let's say your max HP is currently 10,000. 
Nice. That means you'll regenerate 20 HP from the attribute and 250 HP from its passive. Per second, might I add, making it 2700 HP regen in just 10 seconds. Sounds good, eh? It basically changes the basic function of your recall button into a taunt button. Because <laughs> you never need it anymore. The regeneration just slows down to 0.5% for 5 seconds after you receive damage. So only spam your taunt button from a safe distance. Generally, this item is a great pick to counter any kind of poke. And the heroes who work best with this stylish head are meaty boys and girls like them. Especially when they have skills that scales with their max HP. Heroes who use Thunderbelt or when you use Twilight Armor. Talking about Thunderbelt, number 22, Thunderbelt. This electric whip gives you 800 HP, 40 physical defense, 10% cooldown reduction and 10 mana regen. Thunderbelt's passive, Thunderbolt... Man, Moonton's creativity 100. <clears throat> anyway, it lets you deal 50 plus 5% of your hero's extra HP as true damage after you use the skill with your next basic attack. It has also an annoying 40 to 80% slow effect that you apply on the target and the enemies around them. That also scales with your extra HP. And for the cherry on top, it has a very short 1.5 seconds cooldown. It's a great item choice for tank that can easily use a basic attack after every skill cast. But there are also some abnormal ones who use it like Carrie and Aldog. Number 23, Cursed Helmet. The Oryx Helmet gives you 1200 HP and 20 magic defense as basic stats. And it's the upgraded version of Valir's Balls. Ew, what the f***? It's the cheapest tier 3 item that actually gives you decent stats for it. And it doubles the magic damage which is equal to 1.2% of your hero's max HP. It's a nice item to help you clear minion waves, especially in the late game. For example, if you need to defend your base as a tank with your back at the wall, get this item ASAP. It also counters a lot of annoying enemies that use camouflage states as you reveal them by just getting close to them. Just be extra careful with your positioning when pushing turrets as you can accidentally trigger the turret's aggro when enemies receive the burn damage from you. Number 24, Queen's Wings. This pair of wings that they cut off of Alice and then stuck it on your back. I don't even want to think about that. Gives you 1000 HP, 10% cooldown reduction and 5% spell vamp. When your HP drops below 40%, this item will trigger its passive. Where you gain 20% damage reduction and 35% extra spell vamp for 5 seconds. Before it goes on strike for 60 seconds. It's a very specialized item for heroes that benefit from spell vamp and stand on the front lane. Despite being the most expensive item in the defensive section, I see 3 major problems with it. Firstly, triggering this passive requires that your HP drops very low in the first place. And even though you gain 20% damage reduction and huge spell them, there is no guarantee that you will be able to fight back when you are being bursted down by the enemy. Secondly, the buff duration is a bit short. Because when the passive kicks in, your smart enemies can simply retreat and wait for 5 seconds. And thirdly, the cooldown is way too long. It is up to you if you want to use this item or not. But for me, it's a clear F tier item candidate. Number 25, Blade Armor. This Monian armor gives you 90 physical defense, which is the highest physical defense that you can get from a single item, by the way. And it counters every DPS marksman. Blade Armor is also a very specialized item that you really need. But if you are facing a lot of DPS heroes that uses basic attacks, it can become very useful. It has a unique attribute that reduces critical damage by 20% and it will also retaliate the enemy's basic attack back to them. In total, you send 30% of its damage plus 20% of your physical defense back to them and slowing them by 15% for 1 second. As it's an item mainly against DPS marksmen, it's only really good in the late game as DPS heroes deal low damage in the early game anyway. Get it as your 4th or 5th core item if you really need it. But make sure that you don't miss to get any of the other defensive items that are maybe more useful. I mean, now you know how they work.
What you also shouldn't miss is this video where we show you 10 broken item combos that every ML player needs to know. Also a huge shout out to the MLG family members, especially the mythical glory members like Izzy and the Birch Tree. See you over there!